This is the new Microsoft Surface Pro 11. And even though it looks like all the other Surface Pros, I think that this year they struck gold because this Surface Pro has something new, an ARM chip. And I think that this ARM chip in this Surface Pro makes this the best tablet for teachers. Now, if you're watching this because you want to know what the best tablet for teachers is, there is something important to mention. And that is that this Surface Pro 11 has an ARM chip. Now that means that the operating system, Windows in this case, runs on a different architecture than you would normally have on a regular Intel or AMD based laptop or PC. Now in general, that doesn't mean a lot, but it does mean that some programs don't run on that ARM architecture. Now I've been using this in my classes for about oh, four weeks now, and I definitely think that we're ready to make the switch. And the biggest benefit of a device with an ARM chip is battery life, because ARM chips are simply way more power efficient than regular Intel or AMD chips. And it is this power efficiency that's comparable to a regular modern smartphone that makes this tablet so perfect, because you can end your week of teaching with a full laptop, put it in your bag, don't open it for the weekend, and then on Monday still have a fully charged or almost fully charged laptop, which is something that has happened to me quite often. So that makes the ARM architecture in this Surface Pro excellent for teachers. Now again, I want to point out the caveat um, and give out a warning regarding ARM chips. There is software, particularly older software, that doesn't work on ARM. Now, most things can be recompiled, as we call it, when the developers make them for ARM, um, or they can run an emulation, where they use a certain layer to run regular x86 programs on these ARM chips. Now, emulation means that it happens through a certain layer, and we see this in macOS as well, after Apple introduced the M series chips, which are also ARM-based. Apple is very good at emulation, and we know that Microsoft is not very good at emulation, although they did a very good job in this version of Windows 11 that we can find on this Surface Pro 11. So before you watch on and decide whether you want to buy this Surface or not, think about the software that you use in your classrooms. Now, I don't know about all the smartboard softwares, but I know that the software that we use at school for ProEyes does run on this ARM chip, albeit in an emulation layer. Now, one thing that I came across and it happened to me was that we were unable to install the printer drivers from Canon on my ARM device. Um, not even an emulation, not even by installing it manually, it simply did not run. So that means that I can't print to my school printers using my laptop. A bit inconvenient, but not the end of the world and we can find different ways to do it. So before you decide whether you want to buy the Surface Pro 11 or not for your teaching, or basically any ARM device for education, check whether you can run your software either in emulation or natively on this ARM device. Now, of course, like its predecessor, the Surface Pro 11 has all of the good stuff that Microsoft has to offer in a two-in-one device like this. And to be honest, I love two-in-one devices. I've been using Surface Pro since the first generation. So I've had a Surface RT, which wasn't Pro back then, but fine. Um, I had a Surface Pro 3, 4, I had a 6, um, I had a Surface laptop, I had an 8, and now I'm at 11. So I skip a few generations sometimes. And the reason I always go back to the Surface device is because of the touchscreen. Now, I'm a millennial teacher, which means that I don't like printing. And as we've seen, I'm unable to print. And I don't want my students to hand stuff in um, on paper. I'm one of those teachers that wants to have everything digitally. Now, that doesn't mean that I sit in Word and do all of those comments on everything that they do. I use the Surface Pen to correct my work. And I have to be honest, using the digital Surface Pen to correct student work is very useful. It's fun, it's kind of like writing, but it avoids that you have to have all of these papers in your bag and that you lose tests or papers when they're handed in digitally. Now, another great benefit of this Surface device is that in this generation, Microsoft updated the Surface Keyboard, and that means that we can finally use the keyboard separately. Now, the Surface Keyboard is, of course, known for doing this. You're able to simply pull the keyboard off and click it back on. And this is one of the things that they showed off in the very first Surface commercial. But a good thing I like about this one is that if we remove the keyboard, we can still use it because the 11th generation or so-called Flex Keyboard has Bluetooth. And this is something that I was waiting for because I like to write 
and make notes, but sometimes you need to give feedback in Teams, for example, and I want to use the, the keyboard while doing this. Another reason why I like the Bluetooth functionality of the keyboard is that you can use it while your laptop or your Surface is still on your desk. As an English teacher, my students write a lot. And what I usually do is I sit at the back of the classroom and then I have my computer connected to the screen, but I take the keyboard and I type, I model, whatever I want my students to write. So that means that I don't need a very long cable to get my computer connected to the screen. I can simply remove the keyboard, walk to wherever I want to go, and then have uh, and then type whatever I need to type on the screen. So that's one of the best features. And I think, if I have to be honest, that is the best upgrade to the Surface family that we've seen in years. Now there was an earlier generation of the Surface keyboard that was able to do this. You could buy a certain dongle and then you can have the Bluetooth connectivity as well. But it's good to see that it's built in and that you don't need a dongle. Now, <laughs> I need to be honest here. The downside is that they've made it more expensive, especially if you want a pen included. I think we're talking about 500 euros or 500 dollars now, which is quite expensive, especially considering the fact that the device itself is already quite expensive. Now I'll put the specs on the screen, but there's one more thing I want to point out, and that is whether you need to get the Snapdragon Elite version or whether you can teach with the Snapdragon Plus version. And I think this goes for almost all devices with a Snapdragon CPU. Now, it's important to remember that these are sort of mobile chips. They are very powerful and they are very power efficient. They're not comparable to something that's in a desktop PC. So take that into consideration and adjust your expectations based on what you do. Now, that doesn't mean that it's poor in any way. I mean, it's excellent. It's faster than the Core i5, a Core i7. And I think it even outperformed last year's mobile version of the Core i7. So, I mean, that explains how power efficient and how powerful these chips are. Now, as I mentioned, you can get different versions of this. Of course, you can get them with different colors. You can get them with different storage capacities, a different amount of RAM. You can get 16 or 32 big gig, but the biggest difference lies in the chip and the screen. Microsoft offers two different versions. They have an OLED version, which runs the Snapdragon X Elite, and we have the LCD model, the one that I have, which runs the Snapdragon X Plus. Now, the reason I went with this version has to do with the screen. I went to the shop and I noticed that the OLED screen is excellent, it looks very good, but it has OLED grain. And almost all touchscreen OLEDs have it. And OLED grain is where you can kind of see the digitizer on the OLED screen, and almost all OLEDs that have a touchscreen have it. You don't notice it on an iPad Pro because the iPad Pro has a different technology, they integrate the touch digitizer into the OLED screen. Whereas in this case, we have the OLED screen with a digitizer on top. And because we have a system like this, you can see the digitizer when you're using a white background. So I went with the LCD version to avoid this OLED grain. The OLED does look excellent. And if you watch movies or content or you work in a dark environment and you have lots of dark screens, I think the OLED version is fine. But if you have lots of white screens, which is something that we teachers have, especially when you're marking, um, you have white paper or you have a whiteboard, you want to go with the LCD version to avoid having the OLED grain, but also to save a bit on power. Because LCDs are better at handling very white screens when compared to OLEDs, where all these LEDs need to be turned on. So if you want to save an extra amount of battery life, go with the LCD version if you're a teacher. And then people might wonder, is the Snapdragon X Plus good enough for teaching? And I think it is. I think if you really want the best of the best and you want an OLED screen, then you should go for the Snapdragon X Elite. But if you're a teacher and you do regular teacher things, I think you can survive with the Snapdragon X Plus. I even edit some videos on the device and that works fine. So in my case, I use the Surface Pro 11 as my daily driver at school because it's easy to travel with and it has a touchscreen with a pen. So why would you choose the Surface Pro 11 over the iPad Pro as a teacher? Well, the biggest reason why I think you would choose the Surface Pro 11 over the iPad Pro as a teacher it has to do with Windows. Now, the iPad Pro has lots of excellent features and it's a very good tablet. It outperforms literally everyone when it comes to being a tablet. But when it comes to being a laptop, it doesn't do that very well. And that has a lot to do with iPad OS, the accessories that you need to get, and whether you can actually work on an iPad. Now I know that some of you might say, I've had an iPad for years and it works fine, but when it comes to teaching, we need to keep in mind that not everything has an app, right? We sometimes want to use older programs. We sometimes want to work in browser and have good browser support. 
um, we sometimes need full versions of Microsoft Office or whatever Office suite that you're using. And even though these things work fine, I guess, on the iPad, it's not the same as having a full desktop experience. There's a reason why teachers get laptops when they start at schools and they don't get iPads. So when you're doubting whether you should get a Surface Pro 11 or any other Surface device or any other Windows-based tablet, or you need to get an iPad, think about what you want to do with your device. Is it your workhorse? Then I definitely recommend going with something that has a desktop environment, in this case, a Windows device. But if you're using it solely for correcting work, or you want to watch some Netflix as well when you're off, when you have some spare time, or you want to watch one of my teacher toolkit videos, and you have a different device you can work on, I think the iPad does the same job. So in the end, I'd recommend the Surface Pro 11 as the best tablet for teachers. And there are two main reasons why I think this is the case. The first one has nothing to do with the actual device itself, it has more to do with the keyboard that we can now use separately thanks to Bluetooth. The performance is fine and it does everything that I do in class well, it doesn't struggle. But the biggest benefit of the ARM chip is battery life. I can teach two or three days in a row by using PowerPoint and using my device every hour that I teach with only one or two charges. Now bear in mind that the type of screen that you use at your school influences battery life. We use 4K screens, which I always put down to 1080p, so that saves some battery life. But the fact that you are connected to a second screen impacts battery life. So even though the claims of a week might be true, it differs based on whatever you're doing. So let me know, which tablet would you recommend for teachers? Are you going to buy a Surface Pro 11? Have a look at my links in the description to my affiliate Amazon links where you can get the Surface Pro 11. For now, thank you for watching. Let me know which other tech for teachers you would like me to review. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to know when my other videos come out. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in one of my next videos.